this is the most natural state of something that is alive. When there is no body, where is the disturbance? If you didn't have a body, what's your fear? What is your desire? What is the meaning of life when you don't have a body? It has no meaning whatsoever. For you, life is all about the body. That is why life is chaotic. It is disturbing. It is quest for bliss, quest for happiness. But the state is one of agitation, one of disturbance. When this is removed, you bliss need not be created. It is the most natural state. That is why nobody has defined it better than Buddha. He called it nothingness. While the Hindus have been referring to the Brahman as Satchidananda, truth, bliss, and consciousness. Buddha said, it's none of this. It is nothing. It is so complete in its nothingness that it need not be blissful. It need not be conscious. It need not be truth. These words don't mean anything to that thing, which is the only thing. They mean something to you because you are alive. You fall asleep and become unconscious and you are in pain and suffering. In relationship to the state that you are in, you look at Brahman and say, it's blissful, it's truth, it's consciousness. Look at the precision with which Buddha has defined the ultimate reality. You cannot get any closer than this. It is nothingness in relationship to who you are. Because anyways, you are defining everything in relationship to you. You are actually not defining that. You are not defining the Brahman. You are basically defining using human language as to what it is for you. Is it blissful or painful? Is it the ultimate or limited? Is it me or something else? When anyways you are defining it in terms of you, the best way of defining it is to say it is nothing. In relationship to you, it is nothing. But when the you is gone, it is everything. It is said in the Dhampada, mind precedes all mental states. Mind is their chief. They are all mind wrought. Brahman itself is simply vast mind. Again, we cannot define this thing for what it is. We can only define it in terms of who we are. We know what the mind is. We know what minding is. We know the phenomenon of thinking which is a constant process. Now, where is this thinking happening? That's the question. Is it happening inside the body in one small organ called the brain? Or is it happening inside a realm called the mind, which is a universal reality? Some of the most ancient scriptures directly refer to Brahman, the ultimate reality, as simply the mind. Mind precedes everything. Mind precedes all mental states. What does this mean? It means mind is not an experience. Mind is not something that is created. Mental states are created. Agitation is created. When all this is removed, when you're not feeling anything, when you're not happy, 
when you're not sad, when you're not agitated, when there is no desire, who are you? You are the mind, the pure mind, the purest mind is the ultimate reality. Now, why is it mind? Because at any moment, without effort, it can drift into thinking, which means its very nature is that of the mind. Again, mind, when all thoughts are removed, is nothing but consciousness. How can consciousness exist without the mind? Just imagine there is a conscious entity, but there is no way for it to be conscious of itself. There is no mechanism of folding on itself. Then there is no way to realize it. Then it is impossible to know who you are. You will only know what you're not. If the sky has no way of reflecting on itself, then it will only be a cloud or a tree or a bird. Whatever that is moving and agitating under that sky will be the sky. It is because consciousness is not one directional. The same consciousness, which is illuminating everything, can also illuminate itself. Now, that is why it is referred to as the vast mind, because that self-reflection itself is a phenomenon of the mind. You need the mind to perceive. Perception itself comes from mind. This consciousness being aware of itself is also a form of perception. Of course, without the body, without thoughts. It's a deep, intuitive self-perception. Most direct form of perception where there is no separation between consciousness and the awareness of that consciousness. That is why it is the most mysterious of entities. We cannot define it in terms of human language because it can do things that a human being physically bound to the body cannot even imagine. It's like saying the body all by itself becoming aware of itself inside, outside. Your eyes can see the world. But consciousness, the mind, the Brahman is such an eye that it can also see the eye. Now, how do you understand this? It's not possible. That is why it is so hard to get some sense of what is this that you are trying to understand because it can flip and turn and reflect on itself, on outside. It can do all this instantaneously without any effort because it is not physical, because it is not space, because it is aliveness itself. Only something that is alive can be this difficult to understand. Something that is dead is very easy to understand. You go meet it, you will know this is what it is. It is alive. The problem is, it is impossible to define what this aliveness is. We use the word aliveness in a very flimsy way. We use the word aliveness as a reflection. When we see something moving, when we see something changing, we use aliveness as inference. Oh, I am alive. How do I know I am alive? Because I am not dead. That's our understanding of aliveness. We know nothing about aliveness. We have not inquired into the nature of aliveness. 
just like what is light well i don't know what light is but i don't i know that it is because if i turn off the switch there is no light so i know light because i know there is darkness but both are defined in terms of each other we neither know darkness in its absoluteness nor do we know light in its absoluteness it's the same we neither know life in its absoluteness nor death in its absoluteness we define life in terms of avoiding death that's what life is for us death is something that has to be avoided when you fail in that endeavor you experience death but what is death i don't know the most mysterious of phenomenon is aliveness itself nobody knows what this aliveness is nobody knows where it came from why is it here in fact it cannot even come it cannot go it has always been there that is why when you connect to that entity your identity shifts completely you will see you have always been there you have to accept that a word is not what you know it as just because you know and you have become familiar with a certain word doesn't mean that you understand what that word actually means this is the blinding of the mind this is the blinding of thoughts the moment i say life your mind floods in oh i know what life is you know nothing about life when you don't add your superficial explanations to life you will see what you're searching for is life itself is to understand why you are alive what is this mysterious phenomenon called aliveness why am i not dead why am i experiencing something why am i unable to get rid of this i amness all my problems will disappear why do i have to investigate into the nature of reality deal with my body deal with my mind why cannot i simply end it you cannot why here is the answer from the non existence of brahman non existence of everything else follows because it is not existing something that you can go and end brahman doesn't exist now how do you understand this we call it existence we refer to everything that's happening as existence in in theory we have a word for it existence but what do we understand about this existence we don't even use the word in the right sense we refer to existence as a dead thing when the word itself says existing is the most important phenomenon of existence it exists it is there but here the scripture says it is non existence why because the moment you say it is existing then the question would be where was it before this existence for something to exist it should also imply that it is possible for it not to exist because it is impossible for this thing not to exist the word existence does not apply to it it is our way of defining it this entity is beyond existence and non existence 